Well, welcome to a new Harry's Garage video and today's car is the Lancia Fulvia Sport 1600 you see behind me. This was the ultimate version of the Zagato designed and built um, sport uh, model and they made about 7,000 of these Zagato coupes from like 1100, 1300cc and then this final edition, the 1600cc and about, as I say, 800 built, about 74 in right hand drive and guessing about 30 came to the UK. Now there's a bit of a backstory with this car and me because go right back to the um, early 70s, I was at school and I lived in Birkenhead on the Wirral and uh, it wasn't a place where you saw crazy cars at all. You were just in a sort of sea of BL-ness and we had a Mini, my dad had a Citroen Diane 6 at the time. There was nothing particularly glamorous on our street. And I came home from school just turned into our street and what was outside our house but one of these Lancia coupes and uh, it was bright red and what got me was it had a matte black stripe across the bonnet um, which has only came on the 1600 models like this one and it looked impossibly glamorous. Now you've got to remember at this sort of time there was no such thing as Google or YouTube. You didn't see these sort of cars so this was my goodness a wow moment for me. And it sort of started my love affair with Italian cars, that this, they had a different sort of design language to the British sort of cars you saw on the streets, just the dullness of Morris Marinas and things. Um, and the reason it was behind the car is because my, my parents were addicted to real coffee and you couldn't really buy uh, coffee beans in those days. And there was this Italian chap who used to deliver uh, coffee beans to the house. And he also had a garage in Greasby and he was into his Italian cars and generally rocked up in an Alpha of some sort. Um, but he'd swapped to this and he then, you know, during the uh, early 70s, used to come up in this Lancia Fulvia Sport. Anyway, so that's the backstory to this car. Let's go and have a closer look at it because it's got some wonderful details over it. Okay, the first thing that strikes you about this little Lancia is it's tiny. It's um, 13 foot long, uh, about five foot wide. And this one's been sort of cleaned up because they actually came with bumpers as standard, but quite a few people do this. It's been debumpered and then actually properly done with sort of the holes welded up as well. So where, where it attached and it's just a really neat little car. Um, the Fulvia um, this has the upside, it's very boxy, um, the, the coupe as they term it. It's a bit confusing because this one is known as a sport and the regular Fulvia is the, you everyone he know, knows is the coupe. There is actually a four-door saloon as well, but you'd hardly ever see those. Um, but the idea of Zagato, what this was, is to be a more streamlined version. So this is quicker, has a higher top speed and things. It did a little bit of endurance racing. It did some 24-hour racing um, in the States and things, but um, it hasn't got a huge amount of history because you know, the Fulvia um, Coupe was obviously very famous for the rallying and uh, won the sort of precursor to the World Rally Championship in 1972. Um, well, the, the full way, this was more of a circuit racer. Um, you see some pretty hot ones as well. Um, it's, I think it's just a, a great little shape. Um, just a cute little coupe. It's particularly neat at the rear. It's sort of one of the original sort of hatchback, if you like, at the back there. Super clean without the bumpers as well. Uh, a very neat little design. And this car also sports these very um, desirable Cromadora alloy wheels. Now you used to get these on the Fulvia 1600 HF, they're magnesium alloy wheels, so you know, pretty rare things. And of course the bit I really like is that Z on the side to signify this is a Zagato designed and built car. Always wanted to own a Zagato and now I do. I just love those side repeaters, those triangular uh, side repeaters. I think they're unique to this car, but no doubt you'll tell me if they're not. Right, have a look up front. Now what you've got to remember about these little Lancia Fulvias is their front wheel drive and they have a really unique engine. They have a V4, but a very narrow angle V4, and it means it has a single cylinder head. Um, so it's peculiar because you see the four plug leads all dancing in like this. So the engines, and it's canted over uh, at an angle, and then you have twin, um, on this case, Solex um, 40 carbs here, air cleaner, and then uh, gearboxes here as well. And it all sits on a little subframe and it's all right out the front. Um, and they try to make this as sort of compact as they could. Radiator there as well. It's, it's all very peculiar. Um, 
because at the time, you've, this was against the Alpha GTVs and things, and they had a twin cam and rear drive, but this was front wheel drive, and when we get to the drive experience, it has some advantages, it has to be said. But a really trick, typical Lancia, they never did um, things normally. In fact, the early versions had a side hinged bonnet as well. All very odd. Anyway, let's just go around the back. Okay, there's another little unique uh, bit of Lancia going on with the rear hatch as well. Um, we'll have a look at the interior when we get outside because it's so, such a black car and it's black interior. But if you have a look at the rear tailgate, there's a switch on the dash and you, nobody can really open the bonnet unless you know how because it's electric. Um, but rather than having opening side windows, they use the rear tailgate as a sort of vent as well. So you do that. Just one other thing while we're around the back car before we open the hatch is the script. Fulvia Sport 1600, this sort of flurry of um, hung, uh, handwriting. It's almost illegible and it's sort of quite a famous mark of this car. And then we have this little hatch, um, sort of copper heated um, rear hatch as well. That was an option. A lovely little friction brace there. Quite a big space really. And then weirdly, this bench seat in the back, it comes with four seat belts. Um, we've taken the rears out, but you can use it as a two plus two. This thing's full size spare, etc. Now, when I was looking around this car, I kept seeing sort of flashes of red, sort of just chips. And I went through the history, it's a lovely box of history of this car, and discovered this little Lancia left the factory painted red. And then I had the shock of my life, because where was it first registered? But the corner garage in Greasby. And it only turns out that this little car <laughs> was that car I saw when I was a little nipper about this big in my street parked up in Birkenhead, red, glamorous, etc., and got me started. So as soon as I, had, I discovered that, I just had to buy it, as you can probably understand. And the other great thing, it's quite good to drive. So let's take it outside and see what it does on the road. Yeah, first thing that strikes you when you get in here, it's quite small, it's a little tiny little thing. Um, but it, the other weirdness is the seats are quite squishy as well. They're sort of quite comfy, but they are sort of wrapped up around here and you're met with this sort of wood dash, nice, nice instrumentation. And when you start it, you've got a slightly sort of a different sort of burble because of that V4. It just gives us a slightly different engine note. Um, gearbox, um, you've got first offset and then second, third, fourth, fifth in um, regular planes, H plane. Because it is a sort of competition car, this weirdly. And that's, that's because you don't ever use first, that's the theory. Um, so once you move in, you're just in the other gear, so they make the gears easy to flow. I've got, um, yeah, petrol um, temperature and oil pressure and oil temperature over there with the oil temperature um, one doesn't work at the moment um, I've got electric windows which I might put down because we actually have a sunny day in the UK which is amazing um, and there you go now when I first drove this car I'm a little bit worried because I'm staring at an oil pressure gauge that's on naught as oil pressure when you start it up um, but it's, it's a bit low, to, well it's dramatically low on the uh, gauge and I'm very grateful to Rally Preparation Services in Whitney who lent me a little um, gauge to uh, fit any uh, car and I actually ran, when I first got this car, just ran up and down the road with it. With this gauge outside the windscreen to check the oil pressure was alright. And it was, I'm very pleased to say. It's a little lower than you'd like it, but it's not as low as this, this gauge is saying. Anyway, now let the um, engine warm up and then you'll join me a little later on some better roads. Just making my way out the village. There's a, a more details you sort of need to know about this car because um, the last few years haven't been a great period in its life. owner um, sadly died in 2018 but he wasn't um, in best of health before that and this car hadn't actually been driven 
since 2013, so five years. And um, if I look through the MOT record, he only did 60 miles in it in the five years previous to that. So this poor thing had sat in an outside bar, having been resprayed. He did about 2,000 miles in it thereabouts. And then it sat in an outside barn and deteriorated a bit. And the, although it looked sort of shiny on the outside, the paint is, I can only describe it, sort of popped all around the edges. It's popped off just from damp, just being not very well stored. It was, it had rain protection as a roof, but it was open in the wind and the weather's from the side. And it's all a bit sad, really. And that's why the sort of the engine I was suspicious of the engine, has it actually got a proper fault or not? So I've bought this as a potential restoration project, although I bought it from the hairpin company and they spent a fair bit on it just getting it back up to scratch. So all the brakes were redone, it's got a new headline in here, um, the wheels were um, re redone, brand new um, tyres on it, new fuel pump, oil filters, all that sort of thing. So it's this peculiar mix of, you know, it's, it should be, it sort of needs a respray, but I don't want to give it a respray because it's, it looks so good on the outside. Mechanically, it's, it's, it can run. But it actually dries really rather well. And now I know that I don't have to believe the oil gauge, I'm starting to enjoy it. And it's, it's quite a joyful little car, the 1600. One, it's really quite rare and quite special. This is the engine base for their rally, Mancia rally machines, and they, they tweak them up, and it has a you know completely different character. And I just think it's rather cute. It's been a massive hit with the family, and it's just nice to get to know. And it, during this period in uh, Italian automotive history, they, um, there was, a, there was a serious tax to pay if you had high CC um, cars, and that's why we sort of ended up with a two litre Ferrari Dino. And these smaller CC engine sports cars from Italy, because they were like a tax dodge, and that's why they were 1300cc, or you know, like this one. Oh, this is a. This is someone let me out. Um, 1600. And so they made the most of it by having really light, lightweight. I put this on the scales. This is 940 kilos as it stands, and super slippery. Uh, really good CD factor. I'm sorry, I don't know it, um, but it put the top speed up. It added about five miles an hour to the top speed over a Fulvia Coupe, five or six miles an hour. I think this is as near as enough. It's a 120 mile an hour car. It's not bad for a 1600cc uh, machine. Inside it's all pretty basic. There's, um, there was a radio fit and the speakers in the back but they hid it in the glove box rather than wrecking this beautiful dash. Um, no air con obviously. Um, there's a sort of heater control, it's quite warm in here. Weirdly it has electric windows because this is the posh version being the 1600. They, and the other thing they did was um, overriders on the bumpers, but because I haven't got bumpers, I can't show you the overriders. But the initial thoughts when you get into this, it all feels quite tight, um, suspension-wise. There's not rattles and creaks, and the seats are a bit squishier than you expect, and it rides quite well. So it all sort of bodes well for when we get onto some more exciting roads, where you'll join me in a minute. And what I've discovered since owning this, this is a car that thrives on the revs. And it, great uh, ratio, right there, just where you want them. There you go, yeah, you keep it buzzing between four and 6,000 RPM. And this car gets a bit of a move on, and it, it's sort of quicker than you think. You look at the speed, I think, nah. And then you check it on your phone, and yeah, no, that is the speed you're doing. It's a, it's a little, dare I call it, a pocket rocket. Um, you know, it does have that feeling of a competition car, the way it behaves. 
and yet when the revs go down, if I go down to 2000, you sort of, you think, has it got a misfire or has it got not? And it's just that little clamp character of that, that very narrow V4 engine is very different to your normal straight four engine. It just has a different sort of lumpiness to it. Um, but pile on the revs, and oh my goodness, oh, he's up the road, no trouble at all. And the other thing is just this suspension, it absorbs bumps very nicely. Um, and there's no real wind noise. I've got the window up at the moment, I'll put the window down. Oh my lord, look at all these bikes down here. A lot of bikers. Um, no real wind noise. I remember that Alpha um, GTV I had, that had really bad wind noise. Not so in this. Um, this. This is much quieter because there's a general buzz of sound, but yeah, not bad at all. But I'll come back to the squishy seats, really nice seats. So this is all a, quite a nice surprise. I thought it would be a bit more rattly and a bit not feeling all together, but no. It sort of feels, reminds me of a mini. If I attack these bends round here, you'll, you'll get the feeling why. Come down to this dip. Just slightly rubs on the arches, there, is, there we are. Um, those 175 normal profile 14 wheels. Right up we go, 5,000 RPM round here. Yeah, it feels really good round there. Not as I was expecting it. That front wheel drive just pulls you through. And it's got four pop um, calipers on the front. So it's got great disc brakes all round. It's got really good braking. So yeah, I'm rather happy with this thing. Previous owner obviously knew his Lancia's and um, he's made some lovely little tweaks on this. They've got slightly different wishbones at the front give it a bit more negative and I think that's why it tucks in the corners so well. Slightly stiffer anti-roll bar. It's just good fun to chuck about. It reminds you that there is fun to be had at a sort of lower performance level with a really good handling car. You just chuck it at the bend, you scrub off some speed on the way in and on the way out, come on car. Oh I should have. To use the gearbox a bit more often, you can't rely on the torque of a big turbocharged engine. This one, you need to spin. Look at them, just, just great fun. So, there you go, there's this little Lancia Fulvia Sports 1600. I hope you get a sort of sense of the character and why it's joined the Harry's Garage stable. I'm in a dilemma of what to do next with this car. Initially, I was going to have a complete um, strip, um, do a respray, do, do the engine, etc. And now, driving it, the sun's coming out, I think I might just patch up the rust for a year, live with it a bit longer. Uh, but if I do have it resprayed, do I have it black or do I have it red? I bought it, I got interested because I thought it looked really smart in black. And then I found out its history and it was that little that car I saw as a kid and it was red. Do I go back to red? I don't want to make it back to standard. I like the debumpered look. I thought I might do some mild little tweaking on the engine. Just let it rev even um, stronger, a little bit more free breathing exhaust, something like that. But I'm going to have a bit of a ball of this car. And the added uh, bonus is the fact that we absolutely love it. And it's pretty good value. I, can't, I think these are undervalued at the moment. There aren't many cars out there that I think that. So there you go. There's a the little Lancia. If you have enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. There's going to be more videos coming along very soon.